welcome to, I think it's episode 11 of the Confessions of a Yarn Addict podcast. My name is Anakin and I live in the southwest of England in Cornwall, but I am originally from Norway, so you might hear an accent there. So, um, welcome to episode 11. Today I'm going to share what's on my needles, a couple of small things I've finished. I haven't finished anything major since last week, um, but what's on my needles a new stash acquisition and something I'm about to cast on. Um, and then I'm going to talk about my favourite knitting notions and why I like them and how I store them. Um, so let's get started. So let's start with, um, I haven't finished anything major since last week. I have been knitting, and these aren't quite finished yet, but I have been knitting um, some little new little Christmas baubles. Um, I've knitted two. So this one's got beads on it, and this one's a uh, colour work with a little Christmas tree. Um, I haven't actually stuffed them yet, so I haven't finished off the top because I haven't stuffed them yet. And these are little mini ones knitted in DK yarn, so they're quite quick to knit. Probably knitted both of these in an afternoon and an evening, uh, part of an evening. So they're quite quick to knit. So I'm going to actually um, design a couple of more, and then I'm going to do a little tutorial which I'm going to launch in December for these uh, Christmas balls. I'm actually thinking about making it a free pattern, a um, little bit of Christmas fun. I have some other Christmas fun which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, also on my needle still is my Blacker Yarns shawl. So this is the BFL or Blue Face Leicester Lace from Blacker Yarns which um, is a yarn mill here in Cornwall, less than half an hour from where I'm sitting now. Um, I finished the main shawl um, and I'm on the edging, which I'm knitting on um, sideways. The edging is quite quick. I did this yesterday evening, um, probably about 12 repeats of the edging. It took me about an hour last night, probably. I don't know, maybe a bit longer. It took me a while to get the edging right. So I kept, um, I, didn't, I didn't actually swatch for the edging because it's only a few stitches. I actually cast on the edging on the shawl and then just kept trying different um, ideas. So I probably tried about three or four different um, patterns for the edging and then I ended up with this one which I'm really really liking and it's got to stitch as well so it's really really quick. So I moved this into this project bag which I love and I put some of my recent pins on there as well. Um, although the bag's a bit dirty so it does need a wash. So next thing that's on my needle still is my uh, Wool is the Answer sock, socks. I have um, got past where I insert the waist yarn. I'll talk more about these later when I talk about my favourite notions. But I've got past where I insert the waist yarn for the heel, for the afterthought heel. Uh, so now I'm knitting two by two rib all the way around. Um, love the colours on this. Can't wait to finish it. Um, that's the back of it. So it's stocking stitch. It looks. There we go. It's the rib. Stocking stitch. Really like it. I'm still on the first one. I'm not really working on this a lot, mainly if I'm out and about, which I haven't been a lot lately, or if I'm just really tired and I just want something easy to, to knit on. So I'm not knitting a lot on it, um, but hopefully I'll finish it by the end of November. Um, <clears throat> so that's actually all that's on my needles. I've done a lot of swatching this week, um, in the last week, for a design submission for a magazine. And then this afternoon I've got to do some more swatching for another design submission. So I've been busy with that um, last weekend. I spent most of the time swatching for a design submission. But I am about to cast on something new, hopefully today. Um, I'm actually having a tooth extracted this afternoon. Um, I lost a crown, I'm hoping it doesn't show on camera, I lost a crown over here, it's a double crown, so it was two crowns cemented together. I have huge problems with my teeth, probably because I was on, um, been on opioids for about 20 years. Um, I've actually recently changed them to some different uh, painkillers, but they're still opioids, but they're not as strong. Um, but I think that's wrecked havoc with my teeth really, because it was after I um, went on to these particular painkillers that my problems with my teeth started. So, a bit annoying, um, but can't be helped. So I lost a crown up here and one of them was a very weak tooth. Um, so I've got to have the root extracted 
at lunchtime today so I'm not looking forward to that so if I can talk this afternoon I'm not in too much pain I've had quite a few teeth extracted before and I've been fine um I'm actually going to cast them for a new project which is very exciting I'm hoping to get this ready for like a free knit along um in December but we'll see I don't have much time so I really need to cast this on today I'm actually going to be filming it as I go which makes it a little bit more difficult um to actually knit um so anyway let me show you what I'm talking about so this little um bundle of mini skeins called pop is from fab funky fibers I did get this bundle uh, from fab funky fibers recently back in the summer I think it was um so August September I can't remember and I'd actually planned to use this poem for this particular shawl but the more I was thinking about it, the more it just wasn't speaking to me for this particular project I still love this it's beautiful but it's not speaking to me for this particular project so I'll do something else with that um so I had a look on the Fab Funky Fibers website and I found this one and I love this one so I need to decide which order I'm going to do it in and choose a contrasting yarn I picked up two contrast yarns so far i need to decide which one i'm going to use so i haven't quite decided that yet um yeah really like these colors are just delicious um and i've got a very exciting project for this so i'll put the link to fab funky fibers below each one of these mini skeins is 20 grams or and which is 85 meters and there are five of them um so 100 grams in total so really excited about that so um i want to i'm gonna um wind them up or at least the first couple of this afternoon and then cast on hopefully while i'm recovering from my extraction which i'm not looking forward to okay so let's talk about um notions as knitters you probably got loads of notions um how do you store your notions i used to store mine in quite a big sort of zip pouch and it was quite big a bit bulky and not very easy when i was traveling um not very easy to take with me so probably a couple of years ago i can't remember i got this little plastic case um can't remember now where i got it from i'll see if i can find it and um link to it below but it's basically a plastic case opens up it's got a big compartment here and four small ones here so these compartments are perfect for stitch markers so in one of them i got round stitch markers one of them i got my padlock stitch markers and then the other two i've got other stitch markers which i'll show you in a minute so um i love these padlock ones i have loads of those thing i use these for is um if i need to put a marker into the fabric rather than on my needles if i want to mark an increase or a decrease if i want to mark how many repeats i'm doing so i did a um uh, garment recently it was the Trebian cardigan where I because it's a little bit difficult to um, read the repeats afterwards At, after each repeat I put one of these on so I could just count very easily um, these are also really good if you drop a stitch and you can't pick it up straight away these are really good um, to put through your stitch to make sure it doesn't run down so I really like these I got a new pack of them recently um, at Yarndale um, and I really like them you can get plastic ones I've only got a couple of plastic ones in here. I mainly use the plastic ones I've got for workshops now. Um, these are just my personal notions that I personally use. I have a slightly bigger notions bag in my workshop bag that I take to workshops. And I use the plastic ones for workshop. Now, one word of warning when it comes to these plastic ones. I have bought uh, Nipro, I bought Clover, and I bought some cheap ones on Etsy. And um, Nipper and Clover are brilliant, but they're a little bit more expensive. Some of the cheap ones I bought on Etsy have been rubbish. I bought one pack where every time somebody, let's put that down, every time somebody went to close it, it snapped here. So I was using it in classes, and every time somebody went to close it, it would snap um, or undo it, it would snap, um, which is a bit embarrassing in classes. I would tell people in advance and not to worry about it, but it's People still feel bad if they break my notions, but it was fine. So I now tend to use um, these uh, metal ones. Um, I find them a lot better. Um, can't remember. I've got some. I got them from a couple of different sellers, so I can't remember all of them uh, where I got them from. And then the other stitch markers I use most of the time are these small ring ones. Let me just take out a selection of them. Let me do where I can put this. I don't tip. Okay, I just dropped the stitch marker on the floor. So I got a selection of 
little ones. I don't tend to nip with very, very big needles, usually no bigger than four millimeter. Um, so I use these little ones. I think this one is from Little Grey Girl. Um, then I got some um, other ones. I also get them. I've got a lot from um, Fripperies and Bibelots. Uh, for years, she was the only one I'd buy these from. Um, but I have also bought some from Little Grey Girl as well. And then I got these, which are even smaller ones, which are perfect for when I'm doing lace projects or socks and things like that, smaller needles. They will actually fit on a 4mm needle. But they come in a um, sort of mixed colour pack. And I got these, they're from Coco Knits. And I can't remember which shop I got them from. There's a few different shops that sell them. Um, so they're the main ones I use. Um, but I got some of the random ones in here as well. But they're the main ones I use. I don't tend to use big ones very often. I do have these, which I bought from the same shop where I bought the case from. Um, I think it's Yarnistry shop, um, but I will put the link below. These are kind of holographic ones. I don't know if you can see them. Um, different shapes. Really cute. I don't actually use them that often because <laughs> I don't really like dangling. Um, stitch markers but they're a little bit bigger oops there we go a little bit bigger um i do really like them but i don't actually use them that often then i can't remember where i got this from this is a little dog and i can't remember where this came from um it's quite it's a little bit heavier because it's metal um i don't use that very often either but it's very pretty um and i can't remember where i got it from and then i got um in another compartment, I got these stitch markers, which a friend got me. Uh, now, one thing to look out for when it comes to stitch markers is to make sure that the ring that you put on the needles is a completely close ring. Don't buy stitch markers where there's a split because it will tangle up in your yarn. Um, sometimes the yarn will go through the little gap and then end up inside the stitch marker and it's just a pain. But these, a uh, friend got these for me locally. I'm not sure, I can't remember who, who made them now, where she got them from, but I had mentioned to her, she's a knitter, but a more casual knitter, and I had mentioned to her that stitch markers have to have a completely um, close ring. So she did get these for me. Again, I don't actually use them that often because they're a little bit bigger, but if I have thicker needles and I need a stitch marker, these are ideal. I don't tend to use dangly stitch markers very often, um, just because I knit a lot of delicate lace stuff and I don't want them to get stuck in my lace. So I don't use dangly ones very often. Then also in that same compartment, I got one of these. So I'm just trying to see where I got my... I have like a pack of them somewhere, but I thought they were maybe on my desk, but they're not. But these are really great. Um, they're actually These are actually sold to machine knitters and they are longer, but I've cut this one. For a little bit shorter these are great to use as uh, waste yarn um and uh, lifelines and things like that um that is basically a nylon cut cord i bought from a machine knitting shop online and, and machine knitters use them a lot but they're really good for hand knitting as well i use them a lot uh, let me just grab my sock again i use them a lot for um when i need to put in uh, waste yarn for things like an afterthought heel so you can see i got one here normally i try and choose one that contrast with the yarn i'm knitting with but because this yarn has yellow in it you can't it's not contrasting that well but i will still it's enough so when i come to undo it i can still undo it okay um but i have um probably about three or four of those that i use uh for socks for afterthought heels um so I've actually it comes in one really long length and I've actually cut them into three or four. I can't remember. I think probably three. And I use them for afterthought socks. Um, so th those are really, really good. Um, it's useful to have something. If I want a lifeline, a slightly longer lifeline, these are really short. I need to find my main pack of these and put a couple of my longer uncut pieces in here. Just trying to get it back into my little... Um, compartment there i need to find the actual my main pack of them it came in a pack with like four colors and i need to find that and put one of the longer ones that i haven't cut into small pieces in here because it is quite useful to use as lifelines it's not suitable for everything because they're not that long um 
so I don't always use them but they are very useful for lifelines so that's my small compartment stitch markers and in here is also the lifeline I might actually take those stitch markers out and put them in somewhere in my office because I just don't use them very often um but these and these I use all the time okay so let's look at what's in this big compartment so I'm going to try and take it out without losing anything so um, everything I have in here fits in here quite nicely. The thing I like about this case is that if I'm traveling, I can put this um, in my suitcase. Everything in here will go through the airport. So just see where I can put it down so I don't drop everything on the floor. So I got these scissors, really pretty. Um, like these scissors. Um, these are my favorite scissors, which is why they're in that case. And because they got really small blades, they are fine to take on the plane. I think the limit for planes is six centimeters, but do check um, the airport that you're leaving from. It's not much point checking your airline when it comes to stuff you're taking on the plane with you, because your first hurdle is going through security at the airport. So you need to check your departure airport. Uh, but these are usually, I've never had a problem with those. I got quite a few little ones actually. Okay, next up is um, a little crochet hook. I actually keep two of these in here in case I lose one. Um, but the other one is on my table next to my knitting chair because I used it the other day and I forgot to put it back. But these are little tiny crochet hooks. It is they're double ended. It is one side is three and a half millimeter and the other side is two. So two, three and a half. And I use these mainly for picking up stitches. So if I drop a stitch and it's run down several rows, especially if it's stocking stitch or garter stitch, I can just use this to pick it up very, very quickly. Um, if it's garter stitch, I quite like the fact that it's double-ended because I will pick one up, then I'll put it through to the other side and pick up the wrong side row, and then I can just keep pushing it through um, rather than having to take it out and turn it and things like that. I don't always use a crochet hook when I pick up drop stitches. Quite often I'll just do it with my needle. Uh, it just depends on how far down it's gone. Um, sometimes it's quicker and easier to use a crochet hook. So I normally keep two of these. These I got from uh, the Sexy Knitter, who I'll talk more about later because I have one of her Notions cases as well. But I got these from the Sexy Knitter and I'll put her link to her shop below. And then this one, um, I can't remember where I got this from. I'm trying to read what it says on it. Um... I can't read that. Okay, I don't know where I got. Okay, just trying to read who this is from. I'm not sure where I got this from, but it's a little owl. Really cute. Um, it's a needle gauge. It goes from what's the smallest size? Hang on, let me just two, two and a half, three, three point two five, and three and a half. So it only goes up to three and a half. So it's not the most useful needle gauge. But I do knit a lot with smaller needles and I think I mainly bought it because it was cute and um, it's actually got a keychain on it so you can put on your key ring. Um, I think I bought it because it was cute and it fitted into my little notions case. So I really like that. I can't remember where I got it from. Uh, the main knitting needles I use is my Chow Goose, um, the metal Chow Goose. Um, I got fixed circulars and interchangeable circulars and this came with, I can't remember this came with my set or whether I bought this separately, but Chow Goose use um, these things to tighten um, your the join. So when you join them, you have to put this in the hole, then use that as a lever to kind of push against. Uh, this is just the same as my blocking pins, actually. But they also sell these. And I can't remember this came with a set where I bought these separately. I can't remember. But these are like um, grapes. So you can, if you're struggling to tighten your needle enough, you can put your needle in the middle here and then use that, this to get a better grip on it to tighten or undo your needles. I got two sets of these, I think. Um, I keep one in my Notions case and one in my main needle case. I don't actually use them that often because I find I don't really need them, but occasionally they're useful. So I've got quite a few of these. Um, hang on. I got quite a few of these little blocking pins in here to tighten up my needles with when I'm out and about or um, I keep them in my got some in my knitting needle case my chagu case and also keep some in here so I've always got them handy if I need them and then I got this one last year from uh, Wool on the X in Exeter in Devon and it's a row counter and I had to, it came with a card telling you how to use it. And I, it took me a while to work on how to use it. And I haven't actually used it for ages. So I can't remember how it works. 
uh, but it's really pretty but I thought I mainly bought it so if I was somewhere where I perhaps um, like a cinema or something like that where I couldn't uh, knit um, I couldn't use my row counter I could use this because I could just feel it um, but I haven't actually used it very much because uh, I keep forgetting I have it and I haven't actually I can't actually remember how it works I do have the card somewhere um, that came with it telling you how it how it works and then I keep this little guy this is if I'm struggling to thread a needle so this is uh, mainly for sewing needles it is um oh, what's the company called um I can't what well, doesn't say it's a company that sells really trend I can't remember what the company is called <laughs> not very good uh but it's a company that sells sort of trendy sewing notions um in little like cardboard boxes so if you're into sewing stuff you probably know what I'm talking about it's got a little bit twisted but basically you put this if you want to thread like a sewing needle let me just find one if you want to thread a sewing needle this is what it's really designed for you or sewing machine you put it through there through the eye put your yarn through the needle threader then you can just pull it back through main thing I actually use it for is uh, putting lifelines in my um Chagu interchangeable circular needles most uh well i know knit pro and Chagu at least and i think probably higher high as well i'm not sure about addies but a lot of interchangeable needles have a little hole where you put your your needle in to tighten it and if you want to put a lifeline in you can just put the yarn through that hole and then put your lifeline in as you knit a row um, but sometimes it can be difficult to get a yarn through that little hole because it's so tiny So I use one of these and I find those really good. So that's the main thing I use that for really Okay What else have we got here? So another um, Little crochet hook. So I obviously normally keep three in here then because I've got one downstairs as well I got this one uh, Which is like a stitch mark um, chain thingy. I'm not sure where I got this from um, I got some stitch markers on the end um, the stitch markers are from Fripperies and Bib Bibelots and they are one of my favourites um, don't know why they're on this one and not in the main little compartment that I use for stitch markers but I may have, I think I probably put them on here to actually put it in a project uh, when I was using them um, I don't know, I can't remember so those are in there and then I keep these which are the end stoppers for my Chagu interchangeable so if I take the needle tips off I can screw these on the end to stop my stitches falling off the needles. Don't use them that often but I keep one set in here and I keep one set um, in my uh, main in my Chagu needle case and then I got some sewing needles we all need sewing needles right uh, so I got a little thin one which I hardly ever use because it's just a pain these um oh another little thin one which I hardly ever use because it's a I don't like threading needles they're just a pain then I got these and I've actually got four of these didn't realize I had four in here these ones these are actually two different makes so these two with a slightly smaller loop are clover clover ones come in a pack of three this is the smallest one then there's a the medium one and then there's a big one the big one is like I don't know, the size of a cable needle is massive and they live in my project bag that I take to workshops. Um, but these are my favourite ones, the small ones. These are another make. I can't remember whether they're Pony or Knit Pro. Um, but I think they're Pony because I think the Knit Pro ones are coloured, um, like red or blue or something. But I like these because they're really easy to thread. Even if you're using lace thread yarn, these are fine. You just have to pull the tail through a little bit further. And they're really pointy. And they're really easy to use for sewing stuff up so i do like those and then um let's see what's left in here so i've just got some more um of the little um blocking pins to tighten my needles i probably got four of these in total i think um because they're easy to lose my chair a lot of stuff falls down the side of my chair um really really easily um the chair I sit in in the lounge a lot of stuff falls on the side so I do lose stuff quite easily which is why I have duplicates then I got this little hand with a stitch marker on it no idea where that's from um, but it's very very cute I don't know why I've got it in there because I don't think I've ever used it but um and then I've got a little heart button which I got from textile garden 
most of my buttons are from textile garden i've actually got two of these one is downstairs i got a little bag where i keep little things that i use in photos for when i do flat lace and things for instagram i have a button there that i use in photos just as a decorative thing and then i put this one in my notions case so if i'm traveling i've still got something that i can use i think that's the main reason why this one is in there as well to be honest so i can use it if i want to take a photograph and put something pretty in um and then i got this one which uh is a little leather strap can't remember the name uh but i will link it below i just need to check instagram to see who makes it because i can't remember her business name uh but i will link it below but it's a little i've got a couple of these uh three of these actually this is the smallest one i think i got two which are slightly bigger or slightly longer here i think which i use to hold my um needles together my circling needles together for my workshops so i've got a big case for my workshops where i keep all the needles i keep i mainly use four millimeter and three and a half millimeter needles for my workshops so i've got one of these where I, that holds all my four millimeter needles together my circular ones i just put this through the, the bunch of cables and then i got one for my three and a half millimeter ones um for my workshops but this is a spare one this is i think this one's a bit smaller but perfect for keeping um circles together um or i don't know probably other stuff you can use it for so that's what's in my notions case um i hope you enjoyed that just a little bit of a couple of random broken bits in here so i've also got i don't know what this is for it's like a bit part of interchangeable needle i don't know whether it's like a connector thing or whether it's a bit that's broken off i'm not quite sure so that's what's in my main notions case in this one so that's what i use most of the time i also keep a you notice i don't have a tape measure in there i got several tape measures i got one on my desk i got several probably about three in the lounge at the moment i think um i also got a couple of rulers on my desk i use rulers a lot if i'm measuring swatches because i find them a bit more um accurate than tape measures I don't keep a tape measure in there. I probably could take out some of the stuff from this big compartment and put a tape measure in. But because this is the main one I use at home, I don't really need a tape measure because I've got loads of these at home. The other thing I that doesn't fit in there is my row counters. So I love these um, Nipro row counters. Um, they're called, um, sorry, not Nipro, Clover. I think they're called Catcha Catcha. Um, Nipro do the same ones. And I love Nipro stuff. I have never tried the Nipro ones because one of my friends tried them when they first came out and she took it back to the shop because it was so rubbish. Um, so I don't know whether the Nipro ones were approved, but the Clover ones are really good. I do actually have these in my online shop at the moment for £5, which is cheaper than what a lot of people sell them for. So here you can see it's got this button here which locks it. So when that is locked, you can't accidentally press it. And then you just press it for each row. You can go up to 99 um and then if you want to reset it if you want to take out a row or reset it you can just do that here um on each side and reset it to zero and then you can lock it here and it's got a thing where you can put a string through so you can put it around your neck i don't tend to do that i have one in each of my project bags that i need a row counter for which is most of my projects so i do have quite a few of those knocking around if i can't find a spare one then i know i have too many projects on the go um i think i probably got about three of them not in use at the moment obviously they get lost as well like i said earlier the side of my the chair i knit in tends to eat things so i think there might be a couple down there and then in my handbag i keep this little case so this is from the sexy knitter um this is one of her photos this is getting a bit battered i also have a few of these cases with my own photos because she did some custom ones for me uh, so i don't know i assume she's still doing them but i don't know but um any tin will do really but it comes with a set of different things i will link to it below so it comes with a set of different things i actually have the things that i need the most in here so i can't i don't want to tip this up because i don't want you to don't want this to fall out but it's got a magnet there so if you've got metal stitch markers or sewing needles i think it's really for sewing needles but my sewing needles the big ones aren't metal but these stitch markers are metal so they stick on there so you can see i got the little uh, coconut stitch markers the bigger um um padlock stitch markers 
uh, my brain went blank there. And these heart ones are Nipro ones, which I also sell in the shop. Um, so they tend to stick on there. Then in here, just very quickly, I got a tape measure. This um, this is called the Knitter's Tool Tin from the Sexy Knitter. Uh, and it's the sexyknitter.etsy.com, but I'll link it below. Uh, this actually came with the case. Um, I don't think you can choose the colours. I think that's the only thing that came with the case that's still in here, to be quite honest. And then I've got a pair of little scissors. Again, this is from the same person that made my pink ones. I'll try and find her link below. She's either American or Canadian, but I do think there are shops in the UK that sell her scissors now, but I don't know which ones. Um, but I really like these. And then I've got... Um, hang on, I just want to make sure I don't pull loads of stuff out here accidentally. Then I got one of these strings. So if I'm out and about and I'm knitting a sock and I need a piece of waist jam for the afterthought heel, I've got one in here. Um, I Or if I need a waist jam for anything else, I've got it in here. I got one of these. Oops, got a stitch marker stuck on the end. Got one of these double-ended crochet hooks. One of these comes with the case. Um, so I got one of those in there. And then I got two of these. So again, these are the same ones that were in my other case. And stoppers for my interchangeable needles. This case as well, if I'm traveling, that's what I tend to take. Occasionally I'll take my pink, my bigger one. But quite often I'll just take this tin. And then I've got some... Um, blocking pins to tighten my interchangeable needles and I got one of these sewing needles because I got four in my other case I think I might put one of the other ones in here just so I've got two there so if I lose one and I'm traveling and then I got all the rest of the stuff in here are um just checking are all stitch markers so let me see so I got loads of stitch markers in there as you can see so the case is called the Knitter's Tool Tin and it came with the tape measure, um, the little tiny crochet hook, a couple of um, oh, a couple of uh, sewing needles and some stitch markers. They were like little origami stitch markers, which are really cute, but they were a bit, again, they were dangly ones and a bit too big for what I really need. So this all fits in here. Sometimes I have to wiggle it around a bit to fit it in because the tape measure takes up a lot of space. So that fits in there. This lives in my handbag and this I always take on trips with me. Occasionally I'll take my bigger case as well. It just depends on where I'm going. But if I'm out for the day and I'm knitting and I need anything, stitch markers and things, tape measure, I've got that in here. So that's always with me. And that can go in your um, project bag as well. Okay, so that's it. That's my favourite notions and how I store them. Um... I know I got loads of really nice zip cases and some are smaller ones, some are bigger ones and some of them I got specifically for Notions but I haven't used them because I find this case perfect because it's compact and I can just chuck it in my bag. Um, I actually got two of these cases. Um, so that's uh, all I want to talk about this week. Next week I'm thinking about talking about knitting for gifts, so knitting for people or knitting for other people because I have a lot to say on that subject so I think I'll talk about that next week. Uh, don't forget um, my online shop is still uh, valid. Um, I'll put the details below. Somebody messaged me to say it wasn't working. I've tested it several times and I can get it to work but if it doesn't work for you um, then just leave me a message uh, place your order and put a message in the notes box as long as you place the order before the 15th of November which is where the uh, discount expires if you place your order before the 15th of November I will honor the discount so if you've paid too much I will re uh, refund you the 15% 15% is just on the cost of your order not um, on your shipping by the way so if it's not working for you just place your order and leave me a note and I will refund that via PayPal Okay, so I'll put all the details about that discount below. Um, I will also uh, put details of the shawl of the week. When I edit this, I will have decided what the shawl of the week will be. And I'll either add a little video on the end or I'll add some photos of the shawl of the week. I think I know what it's going to be, but I haven't quite decided yet. Um, I need to decide today. So I will add that to the end of this video and then put the details in the link below. But the shawl of the week, you'll get 25% off that pattern for a week. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Do tell me what you'd like me to talk about in this podcast. 
and what you enjoy about this podcast and give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you like to hear from me regularly. Um, I hope you have a lovely day and I'm going to get back to some work now.